Hi, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be here today. I'm going to be talking to you about finding your mojo in these extraordinary times, and that's particularly how to build resilience in your organizations. So my name is Kathy. I'm the HR partner for the supply chain at Unilever in South Africa. And you'll see I've got up on the screen a picture of myself and my family, which is really relevant in these times, because before I would drop them at school, I'd go off to work, I'd have a great day in the office, and I'd come home. And actually, the resilience I've had to build with two six-year-olds screaming into the office, interrupting me constantly while I'm trying to get my job done, has been a whole new, new ball game. And that is exactly what our employees have been facing. So parents now have the full responsibility for their children day and night. And many, of course, uh, like you and I, are still required to work. Home has become the school or the daycare center. And lastly, as we're trying to get our work done, our children seem to be unpacking more and more and more. And even though some of the children have gone back to school now, actually, there's still quite a few that are at home and there's still a, an increased burden on parents to educate their children. And the last thing is that home has become a safe haven for some um, outside, outside the safe space or inside their safe space, but actually a place of loneliness for others. We have many employees at Unilever, as I'm sure you do in your workplaces, who actually live alone and therefore are finding it incredibly lonely being six months alone, isolated in their homes. On the flip side, when we talk about business, business is trying its, its, to be resilient itself. So businesses are trying, really working hard to survive through the crisis. Leaders are working hard to keep our employees motivated, healthy and productive. And employees are wanting to remain relevant. So there's an increased stress that's been placed on our employees in, in remaining relevant and retaining their employment. So job security has become more important now than ever before. So what is building resilience? And I think this, you know, it's different for everyone. So you've got the superhero that gets through a challenge and builds the resilience and loves to be the one who really takes all the credit. And on the other side, you have those silent warriors who build their re resistance slowly but surely. And for them, the daisy in the parched earth is actually the thing that they hold on to to build their resilience and say, actually, I've got through this and I've taken this, the strength. So resilience is, is not the same for everyone. What did we discover at Unilever? Well, the first thing is that the more human you are with your people, the more discretionary effort you get from them. Hence, their performance is enhanced. So it's a little bit of a paradox, this, because you have to be human, and then you get the discretionary efforts, and then you get the performance. It shouldn't come the other way. So some beliefs that we'd, not, we'd like to shift, and that we actually had to shift as we entered into these, these uh, dif difficult times, should I say. So the first is the belief we had was don't mi mix business and personal. They're different. They're separate. What happens at home stays at home and what happens at work stays at work. The next belief we had to shift was consider flexibility only when people have earned my trust. So get the trust and then consider the flexibility. The next is I have to carry the burden of solving for problems. So I'm the only one as the leader that can solve problems. And actually we had to shift these, these beliefs. So we had to give people the psychological safety to share their personal constraints. We had to give trust to people rather than expect them to earn it. And we had to say that everyone is creative and has the ability to solve their big problems. And the more problems they solved, we realized the more problems they were able to solve. So no longer did we say, actually, where are you? What are you doing? Can you keep a log of your hours? Make sure your projects are, are clear. We said, let's just trust our people. And that's exactly what we did. We asked ourselves, what happens if we don't shift our leadership to accommodate our people? What happens if we do nothing and we continue leading in the old and not in the new normal? Well, the first thing we found is that mental and physical wellness is, of course, severely impacted. Increased stress and anxiety does lead to reduced resilience. We also found that discretionary efforts, of course, is significantly reduced. So employees do what is required of them. And we know that if employees are doing only what's required of them, the job, the real job will never get done. Employee engagement is impacted if we're not able to shift our, our leadership style. 
And when people feel less valued, there's of course a difficulty in the team dynamics and being apart from each other is also not conducive to building a strong team where people, if people are feeling less valued. If people are feeling incredibly valued, it doesn't matter where you are. And we have found that as well. Reputational risk is something we considered because social media is active and has been active with people sharing openly what they want from their company, what their company is doing, isn't doing, who's um, playing in the new normal, who's not playing in the new normal, not accommodating. It's all out there. And then the last thing is loss of talent. So what we believe is that we will have presenteeism. People may sit and wait it out, but actually that's not good enough because when things get going again in the market and as soon as options open up, we are going to lose them. So we said, actually, we have to shift our leadership. It's not even an option because our people and our business is important enough. So what are we doing to support our leaders? So firstly, we consider well-being, taking into the four quadrants on the right hand side of your screen. We've got physical well-being. We've got purposeful well-being, we've got mental well-being, and we've got emotional well-being. And we believe that once you have all four of these types of well-being together, that is when you get resilience. So we've asked every single one of our employees to take time to focus on a plan for their well-being. When we started rushing into work from home, work with kids, uh, work in the factories on the front lines, we actually we, we ran into it. We then stopped and said, hold on, create a plan. And we gave people some space to create that plan. We also put in place things like um, a resilience challenge. So there was a 14 day resilience challenge to say, how do we come back even stronger? Um, we allowed people to do an assessment on their well-being quotient to understand where on these four types of well-being are they? Are they doing well on the physical well-being, but maybe not so much on the emotional? And we help them then create this plan. Um, we also, of course, offered um, uh, support on our employee assistance program. And we, we said to people that the employee assistance program, of course, isn't face to face right now, but we facilitated online um, EAP sessions and that was COVID and non-COVID related. And the last thing is that we actually helped our employees cope through the COVID with facts and the truths from our medical and occupational health team, because there was so much misinformation circulating and we found that people needed to know the truth and we helped them with that. We then said, let's remove distractions so that you can be present in the conversation. And we gave people tools and, and skills to help them remove these distractions. We also set about saying to people, be clear about the standards you expect from yourself and be clear about the standards you expect from your team. Make sure you've prioritized and be very clear on what you are doing and what you're not doing. We then also have asked people to improve their empathy and emotional intelligence by looking around, asking what the situation would look like in the eyes of another person, not only about me and my opinion, but about other people as well. Um, and then we, we, particularly with our leaders, had some sessions focused on noticing the emotions that arrive, arise within yourself when you're faced with this disruption, this change, and this challenge. Because if you yourself as a leader are feeling anxious or feeling fearful, feeling frustrated, it was really difficult to lead the teams through these times. And then the last thing is um, we've continued to provide training and, and tools, both online training as well as facilitated sessions um, around helping future fit yourself and get ready for the future. And we actually right now have a program around future fit skills to ensure that everyone is clear on what the future holds in terms of the skills that they possess. So in summary, the top tips I would say for building a resilient organization is really around coaching leaders to always bring their best self. Our jobs as HR professionals is to coach, to provide executive support and around performance coaching. It's about coaching our leaders to bring their best self. It's around trusting and caring for our people because now more than ever, people want to know that we care. The third thing is to say, actually by being more distant, distant we somehow become more inclusive and be deliberate about recognizing each person. 
we're not sitting in, a, in around a table anymore. We're sitting behind screens and that inclusivity is really critical. The fourth thing that I can give as a tip is to say people will value their health, their family and their environment more now than ever before and therefore help them to have purposeful work. Digitization has become a natural part of our world, so embrace it. Find creative ways to keep people engaged, find creative ways for team building, find creative ways to get connected. Number six is resilience comes from a place of being able to solve problems, because when you solve problems, you learn how to problem solve, you learn things, and you actually feel more confident and more positive, and therefore give people the space to solve their own problems. Point number seven is that businesses will work from a point of purpose. So the citizens and the environment matter and only businesses that are clear on their purpose will be able to connect their people to what they're trying to do. So for Unilever, that was around, we in South Africa specifically, we had a really small hand sanitizer business. We ensured that through the last six months, we've exploded our hand sanitizer business because that's what people want. That's what people need. And that's what gives our employees purpose because they are producing something that is needed in the market. And the last thing is that flexibility is now the norm. So we shouldn't talk of flexibility as something that, that is for special people uh, or under special circumstances. Flexibility is the norm. It's not going away and we absolutely have to embrace it. So that's all from me. Would be fantastic. I know we have a QA session, so I would love to take some questions um, and we can work through some of those thoughts in a minute.